This short video is introducing and describing one of Australia's most impressive predators of the night, the powerful owl. Described eloquently by naturalist David Flay as the giant of the continent's nocturnal birds of prey, epitome of solitude, and a voice that expresses like no other the essence and grandeur of the mountain bushlands. Ninox strenua, the powerful owl. We hope you enjoy this video as we explore their nocturnal world. One of the nine species of owls in Australia, the powerful owl is grouped as one of the hawk owls. This group also includes the boobook owl, barking <coughs> owl, and rufous owl. The other group of owls in Australia are the more commonly recognised mask owls with their storybook round dislike faces. In Australia, this group includes the barn owl, masked owl, sooty owl, lesser sooty owl, and grass owl. The powerful owl is one of Australia's threatened species, being listed as threatened in all states that it occurs in, being Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, and South Australia. It is the largest owl species in Australasia, upwards of 60 centimetres in length, with a wingspan of 140 centimetres. It is dark grey to grey-brown with a white barring on its back and wings and off-white below with distinctive dark V-shaped chevrons. The eyes are large and yellow and set in dark grey brown facial mask. The legs are feathered and the yellow to orange feet are massive with long sharp talons. The sexes are alike but the female is slightly smaller with a narrower head. The powerful owl can often be mistaken for many of the hawk owls where their range overlaps. The rufous owl overlaps in range in the north of Queensland, but it has no V-shaped chevrons and is more rufous in colour. The boobook owl occurs across much the same range, but is much smaller and has a defined white cross between the eyes. The barking owl is also found in similar areas, but has vertical barring on the breast instead of the V-shaped chevrons. Another species commonly mistaken for the powerful owl in urban situations is the tawny frogmouth. The tawny frogmouth is not actually an owl, but a nightjar, and is much smaller than the powerful owl and has a wide, broad beak and likes to camouflage itself as a tree branch. The powerful owl is more often heard than seen, with a characteristic slow, deep and resonant double hoot that can travel for over a kilometre through the bush. Once the young owlets are about to fledge from the nest and during their time out of the nest and still dependent on adult care, they are often heard trilling or begging for food or attention from the adults or siblings. The powerful owl is endemic to eastern and southeastern Australia, mainly on the eastern side of the Great Dividing Range, from southeastern Queensland to Victoria. The powerful owl requires large tracts of forest or woodland habitat, but they can occur in fragmented landscapes as well. The species breeds and hunts in open or closed sclerophyll forest or woodlands. Occasionally they can be found in open areas near forests such as farmland, parks and suburban areas as well as in remnant bushland patches. During the day the powerful owl prefers sheltered gullies with darker canopies, especially along watercourses for daytime roosts. Such roost sites in New South Wales commonly comprise of tree species such as turpentine, cheese tree, black she-oak and coachwood. A critical requirement for the powerful owl is that they need large old growth trees to nest. Powerful owls nest in large tree hollows formed in the trunk of large old trees. These trees are predominantly old eucalypts or angophoras. In and around urban areas such as Sydney, the powerful owl has maintained its presence where suitable tracts of habitat are found. If sheltered gullies and large hollow bearing trees for roosting and breeding are available, and there is a prey source, then they seem to be able to survive, even in our cities. As with nearly all owls, the powerful owl feeds at night almost exclusively on arboreal prey. Often powerful owls are seen roosting during the day with a prey item from the night before held firmly at the roost. As with many other birds of prey, powerful owls regurgitate pellets of indigestible hair and bone. Regurgitated pellets are commonly found beneath favoured roosting sites that the owls frequent and are a valuable resource in investigating the diet of particular owls. The main prey items are medium-sized arboreal mammals, particularly the greater glider, 
common ringtail possum, sugar glider, and to a lesser degree, brush tail possums. Birds comprise about 10% of the diet, and flying foxes are important in some areas. As a high proportion of their prey species require tree hollows and a shrub layer, these are doubly important habitat components for the powerful owl. Powerful owls mate for long periods of time and may even mate for life. The breeding season for the powerful owl extends from about March through to spring and into summer. Pairs start reaffirming bonds in about March and nesting occurs from late autumn to midwinter. Females lay two eggs and incubation lasts approximately 38 days. During incubation and almost until the young owlets are ready to leave the nest, about 30 days after hatching, the female rarely leaves the nesting hollow. The male roosts in a grove of up to 20 to 30 trees situated within 100 to 200 metres of the nest tree and hunts for and feeds the whole family throughout this time. The young fledge from the nest after about 55 days and the family does not return to the hollow that breeding season. Juvenile birds are downy white on the head and underparts and they have much shorter tails than the adults. Over time the young will slowly develop more mature plumage. The young owlets stay with the parents for several months, still reliant on being fed whilst they learn to hunt for themselves. Powerful owl populations have declined markedly since European settlement, as has so much of Australia's biodiversity. The major causes of this decline have been habitat loss and habitat fragmentation coupled with the loss of hollowed bearing trees. These impacts not only directly affect the owls but also have a major impact on prey populations which are obviously critical to the owl's survival. Habitat loss and fragmentation have largely been a result of clearing for agriculture, urban development and to a lesser degree forestry practices. These impacts along with high frequency, intense wildfires, have also led to the loss of hollow bearing trees. Other impacts to the species include predation by foxes and cats, particularly when young owlets are learning to fly. More recently, car strike has become a significant issue for populations living close to urban development. The highest priority for the conservation of powerful owls is the protection of old growth forests and forest remnants with large hollow bearing trees. Although the powerful owls can exist in a fragmented landscape, the maintenance of connectivity of bushland areas is critical to ensure abundant and healthy prey populations. There is a national recovery plan for all the large forest owls, which include the powerful owl. This plan is administered through the New South Wales State Government. Recovery objectives within the plan form part of development guidelines, research goals and management actions in areas where the species exists. Another conservation initiative is the Powerful Owl Project, being run by BirdLife Australia through their Birds in Backyards program. The project is looking at the urban-based population of powerful owls. The project is investigating the breeding success nest site fidelity, susceptibility to disturbance and threats to the species with the aim of informing better management of this threatened species. Such a magnificent bird is the powerful owl and we hope that you have enjoyed watching this video. It is our hope that increased understanding of the species and conservation efforts across the board will help to ensure the survival of the species long into the future.